Good evening friends. In this session we will get down to looking at the for each file enumerator uh, which is one of the most widely used uh, and for the data load from a flat file to a SQL Server database table. So what I have here in this demo session is an employee table uh, which is currently truncated. It stands truncated and if you look at we have uh, I have created a folder data load which has employee uh, folder which contains two files and it has data to two records each in, in both of these files and then I have a subfolder also which contains one file uh, having two records so in total we are going to load uh, the data from all of these three files and once the data is loaded uh, we will look to archive all the four uh, files that we have uh, loaded into this archive folder so that is our primary objective that we are going to achieve in this session from our <coughs> use of a for each file now let's get down to looking at what we have in the SSIS package looking at the variables first uh, I have created three variables the first variable is uh, the root folder path or the directory from where the file needs to be loaded uh, into the database so this is the path and then we have the archive path which we define where all the files once loaded needs to be archived once the load of the data is, is complete and then for the mapping of uh, for each loop container I have created a dummy a flag kind of a variable which stores the directory file directory in process it will loop across each of the files and it will, con uh, it will map the directory to this where file path so it's of string type and, and I have initialized that value to null or nothing so these are the three variables for you now let's get down to looking at what we have in the for each loop container so in the for each loop container we go to the collection tab we see that for each file enumerator is the one that we have selected and in the folder or, or the landing folder how is this coming up we would see actually this is a dynamic load and we are using expressions so in the expressions we are we have actually mapped it from the root uh, folder so if you look at the expressions you will see there is a directory option uh, and we have if you, if you just select this you will get the directory option and we have mapped the directory value from the var root folder uh, of variable so it is going to be uh, loading the uh, landing root directory from this uh, variable expression and then we have the files so we are we are going to load the files of emp underscore file one two three that we have the naming convention text files and the naming conventions are something like this so we specify as emp underscore file star means it could it, it could be one two or three uh, or whatever so so it's anything with the name starting from emp underscore file and ending with dot txt and then we have we retrieve the file name using uh, three uh, we get the options like we have the fully qualified option name only and the name and the extension so what of what all these three stands for is the fully qualified name will be mapped to the variable mapping in the iteration when it is iterated uh, for each of the files in this in this option current you know uh, current example if we put it to the name and extension it will only map uh, iterate and map the name of the file with it with uh, its extension uh, to this variable in the variable mapping and and the lastly if we just use the name it will simply map the name of the file during the iteration to the where file path and then we uh, check the value trans uh, traverse subfolders which means that we would like uh, to load the data from the subfolders also it could be five or six folders which are there when we check the options which means that we will also want to load the records from this file standing on the subfolder so uh, I hope it's it's uh, it's clear to you guys uh, retrieve file name actually maps and then we go to the variable mapping variable mapping option we are going to whatever value is being collected I mean the complete fully qualified value which is actually uh, the file path along with the file name it will be mapped to the where file path variable so that's your uh, for each loop container 
uh, the, the last thing that I would like to mention is since we are using the expressions uh, for loading the root folder we are not hard coding it here we are actually loading it from the var root folder uh, remember to delay your validation which means when you select the properties of your for each loop container and you go and see the delay validations uh, properties just set it to true which means the validation will not happen before the package starts running it will happen at the runtime this will help uh, the data to be loaded at the runtime and also uh, to be loaded from the variable at the runtime so that is the significance of uh, setting this delay validation to true now let's move on what we have in the dft data load is i have a data flow task which uses the flat file source as uh, the source of the data and then i have a oledb destination uh, if you look at this uh, flat file source it is actually using ff uh, flat file connection manager and and the maps and it maps the column now let's try to look what we have for flat file connection manager uh, what we would be trying to see here is is uh, we would simply load this uh, connection value uh, through a dynamic push which i mean which i mean I'm sorry. I think my computer. Yeah. Okay. If you see, you you do not see the file name or path in the browse section because it's being loaded dynamic dynamically. Which means, uh, if you go to the properties of this, uh, I am loading the connection string from the var file path, which is being collected at the runtime from uh, my for each file enumerator. It will be collected and and passed as a source string, source connection connection string to my uh, flat file. Uh, next, we use a OLEDB collection manager, which is uh, the destination table i'm loading it and mapping it to the emp uh, table at the run uh, this will happen uh, and through a oledb destination and then i have i'm using a system file system task which is for the archive again to mention that not to forget since we are mapping this uh, through an expression remember to check your delay validation property to true for this uh, dft also Lastly, we move to the uh, to the file system task where I am going to use the variable or option ar an archive or move the file once it is run. Once the files are being loaded to the database, I'll move these files to my archive folder through this archive path variable, and this is the connection that I am actually uh, or the configurations that I am using. Uh, again, not to mention since here we are using this. Uh, archiving functionality through a variable and expressions remember to delay your validation set your de uh, delay validation property to true so that's all the configurations that we have for this SSIS package uh, now let's try to see the data there is no data for this table currently and we are going to load the data from the flat files here from flat files 1 2 and 3 let's run this package right so the package has executed now let's evaluate the results now if you look at the employee table we find that all the six records have been loaded to our employee table now going back to the folder structure what we have here is in the load data employee there is the folders the files have been moved and and they have been moved to your archive folder so the files have been all the three files which uh, uh, where actually having the data for 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 load I have been moved uh, to your archive folder so that's in the simplest uh, manner a demonstration for your uh, file system uh, for your file enumerator task uh, where we can loop across each of the file and uh, the subdirectories and load the data into our database uh, 
through the use of for each file loop container thank you friends